Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity, 12 o'clock location. We have Hawk starting as the yellow Zerg, bottom right hand corner. We have Gypsy starting as the white Terran. Special thanks to Gypsy for giving me these replays, by the way. And this is the second set of the NA team battles from August 28th. I believe this is game six. Actually, exited the replay just to double check that because I was saying it's game five. It's actually game six. So Gypsy, check him out at Gypsy93 on Twitch TV, 12 o'clock location. Check out Hawk at HawkSC. On Twitch TV. I'm actually excited about this match in particular because recently Gypsy did it. So there's two two YouTubers I want to point out here, both Gypsy and Nyok, and they're really hero Terran players. A lot of people feel Gypsy's the best North American Terran out there right now. And maybe, I don't know if I'd put him in maybe top 10 foreigner Terran at large at the moment. I'm sure there's arguments there, one direction or the other. Clearly, I think everyone's like, yeah, but, ah, never mind. I won't get into that. That, that. that feels like a side issue. But anyway, he did a great video talking about essentially different mechanics in the versus Zerg playstyle and decision making therein. And it was actually very enlightening to me in particular because as the meta has moved from three hatch to two hatch, the, dis the reasons Terran are doing things has shifted. So I'm not going to give any, I'll give one spoiler there, which is uh, oftentimes when Terran are moving out before in the three hatch play, they were moving out to kind of force something colonies and things like that. Now it's more or less to, yeah, keep the mutalisks back. Uh, force <clears throat> Zerg to expend resources more or less in building mutilus, things like that. Anyway, Hawk going for a 12th hatch. I'm curious to see what he's going to to play into, actually, as far as build orders, especially because I feel like this is, as far as the matchups in the meta, I feel like this was the one that's taken me the longest to kind of catch up on. I feel like the other one that's been, I don't know, challenging has also been the ZVP, which has been in a lot of flux. I think actually the problem for me recently with a lot of the Zerg versus Protoss matches in NA team battles in particular as far as casting, is there are so many good North American Zerg right now in Hawk, in Striker, in Crossy, obviously. Uh, Crossy, I think, has arguments for being the best North American player right now. And Gypsy, actually, oof, going for a Command Center. <clears throat> command Center before Barracks. He's actually going 12, uh, what is this, 14 CC. Overlord sees it. He's not going to pay for it, I do not believe, because Hawk has, in fact, gone for a spawning pool here. But this is on Ascension, by the way. And I like that he's kind of doing this staggered wall. So the Zerglings kind of have to go all the way around. You can get Marines kind of in that pocket from there. But I don't even think he's going to pay for this. So he's going to get a big economic leap in the early game with a bit of a risky play. If he's going up against even a, I think even a 12th pool, you can end up paying for this. So he's just assuming that Hawk was going to open up 12th hatch or lack scouting information. Additional, additional supply depot actually on that corner. <clears throat> By the way, I'm going to give a, I do want to give one more shout out, which is the Eski out there. He's been giving me consistent shout outs in his chat to go ahead, but go ahead and check him out and follow him as well on Twitch. He's been doing a lot of Terran stuff. He's out in the stream live. I do stream these live on Twitch TV. Looks like we are seeing straight to, so rather, so we got two Zerglings being built and straight to lair. So this is going to be pure two hatch, very, very rapid response. And so let's see if Gypsy definitely going to scout this actually getting first scout as well. So everything working out for Gypsy right now, I've delayed that scout to get the command center and then immediately got first scout as he moves this SCV up to the 12 o'clock location. Oof. SCV taking a lot of damage here, though, but he's already got all of the information he needs. He knows that that layer is rapidly on the way, so he's going to need to fill in with a lot of... Yeah, already getting that engineering bay and a second barracks. He's definitely going to need to fill in with a lot of marines and a lot of turrets to fight these mutalists spack. And that is one thing with opening this command center build and running against this is it definitely puts you in a... Defensive position where the marine you end up with just a slight fewer marines in the front because you end up with that barracks uh, built a little bit later. But we'll see how things roll out. He's getting that engineering bay first. Let's see if he's going to go for that weapons one build he was actually talking about. Although usually with that, I think it was sticking on a single barracks. So it looks like he is just... No, he is in fact going, yeah, weapons one. I like this build in particular. And this is actually... Maybe I won't recommentate the other game. I might anyway. But I, this is a build I've been really excited to see. Mostly because I feel like the current meta in Zerg is definitely two-hatch play overall. Ooh, grabbing a second extractor. So it looks like Hawk might do a full dedication to all-in Mutalisks. With, and with that Weapons 1 upgrade, that could be that could be devastating. D depending on how well Gypsy... Never mind, he actually grabbed that third hatchery. But he still, it looks like this is going to be three-hatch and a lot of Muta. Because he's hoarding all sorts of gas at this stage. Spire about halfway finished. But I really like the, the level 1 weapons upgrade in particular. Because so much of what Zerg does these days is off those mutal builds, third barracks being grabbed. And so having that level 1 weapons early and a lot and just 
more or less being a bigger pain to the mutas in the air and for it just does it i just think it's a great build i think it's a great compensation uh, gypsy mentioned that he likes going this when he can knows he can get a front door seal this is a nice front door seal a lot of marines actually were able uh, to produce in that corner it doesn't look like the marines have range to get those Zergen quite yet, so Gypsy moving a couple of Marines to the right. But in the meantime, he's grabbing all sorts of barracks. So this is like turning into a five barracks uh, level one weapons push, which is something we saw. This is kind of the straight up counter to standard three hatch builds, although, although I believe the timing of this was a little bit different. He's already planting turrets on the front door, but this is going to allow him not only to have that level one weapons, it's going to allow him to have all sorts of Marines in the mid game. So it's going to come down. Hawk still has some room in this. It's going to come down to some micromanagement, though. He's already got several Mulisks out in the air. But it's going to be very difficult, and it's going to have to be very, very precise with all of this because he's going to go up against a flood of Marines. They are going to have level 1 weapons in not too long. They do not have range right now as these Mulisks are pushing in. So Gypsy is going to have to rely on turrets and stim and be very, very careful with that play. This is kind of the, the window where Hawk might be able to get the most done. Looks like there are turrets to the corner, and Gypsy doing a great job of body blocking with these Marines in the way. I'm not sure if Hawk realizes that range is not there yet or not. More Mutalists starting to group up. He is, I, and again, I expect this to just continue. He's got that level 1 weapons upgrade in the background as well. This is a complement of 8, which is about what you see at this stage of things. Three more Mutalists should be joining momentarily. Range not that far off. L level 1 weapons not that far off. And once those come into play... Gypsy can start getting extremely aggressive. Hawk actually, I'm not sure what the play was there. Walking into the turret, seeing two turrets there and immediately backing off. And Gypsy pouring out of this gap. This was actually a big gap to kind of push through because the Mulos could have done some harassment right there where there's just less maneuverability. So now they're out in the field. And this is honestly, I feel like danger town for Hawk because yes, he's going to have more Mulos out in the field, but you can see how quickly those Marines shred with that level and weapon and range through those Mutalists. One Mutalist down almost immediately already, and they're starting to press to that 3 o'clock base, and honestly, I feel like if Gypsy wants to, he can just walk through and take that base out, stimming and walking in, getting another two Mutalists. And again, this is why I really like this build. I feel like it's so strong for the current meta. Gypsy executing it on, in my opinion, perfectly here. Again, pressing up to these Mutalists. Yet another Mutalist down. Hawk re-engaging and down to five Mutalists. You can see how quickly they're just getting shredded, though. But with those exchanges, it looks like he is going to be able to clear the rest of this attack force out. I don't know if these medics are going to be able to regain control or not, but this was a lot of Mutalists that were expended from Hawk. And yeah, maybe Gypsy was a little bit over-aggressive. We'll have to see. But keep in mind, he's got all sorts of barracks in the background. It looks like he's up to six barracks now. Already getting a starport and everything else. And honestly, I feel like he's done so much damage in just the pure amount of mutalisks he's cost. And ooh, Hawk actually being brave. So he is working his way towards the Lurker Tech. He's got his Queen's Nest down in the, the left-hand corner as well. But Gypsy moving out once again. And Hawk with a full complement, it looks like, of mutalisks to run in and engage this. So ooh, a little bit of a doodad in that corner. Gypsy might have overextended a little bit. We'll have to see. He's still decent supply ahead. He's got plenty of reinforcements to engage if those mules... Uh, basically, and there are two sunken colonies on the front door. But this is a lot of territory to try to defend from Hawk. And he's already lost a lot of Muta in the forward field. Let's see if Gypsy can hang on. I think he's planning on just... I think he feels like he... Uh, this is kind of what, knowing Gypsy's playstyle. I think he must have felt... Nice turnaround attack, by the way, from Hawk. Picking off reinforcements. I like how he's hovering around this gap where the Marines can get stranded back from the Marines and going ahead and picking off stragglers right there. But again, losing... A, if he stands anywhere near these Marines with that level and weapons, he just gets obliterated, it seems. He is working towards that carapace upgrade. A very popular upgrade to go. This is kind of what they call... I, this isn't exactly the Crazy Zurich style. This isn't enough Sutton Colonies uh, to be Crazy Zurich style. But Lurker... Tech is up. Lurkers are being morphed right there. I don't see a lot of lurkers or defenses towards this third. Is this lurkers in the line? It looks like, okay, there are lurkers right there. I think Gypsy was slow playing from that. Honestly, with this amount of barracks, I expected him to be a little bit more aggressive. But I think he feels he's ex done enough damage that he's going to go ahead and sit back. He's waiting for, it looks like, armor one. Uh, this group of marines is in high danger because you can see the mutalisks out in the way. But in the interim, he's making his way towards... Oof, got another... Mules down. He does have to wait for science vessels before he can really accomplish anything on the field. And these Marines just getting wiped out. Hawk doing a fantastic job of really cutting off these reinforcements. 
and just uh, especially considering how fragile the Mulesks are against this level again. <laughs> I'll stop emphasizing this now. But he's just done a great job of actually keeping this medic marine count low considering the sheer volume of barracks in the early game that's been pouring out. However, dropships now in play, double science vessel out, irradiate should be there as well. This is one thing on a blue storm style ascension map is where you've just got big drop areas. We saw him do this before in another match. This almost feels like maybe I've done this one before. It doesn't matter. Evolution, evolution Chamber down, Ultra Cavern on the way. So this is going to be double Evolution Chamber. Adrenal Upgrades on the way as well. And the two Science Vessels making their way forward. These Mutalisks are not long for life at this stage. Just one Irradiate gets dropped. And it looks like nice Irradiate right there. Double Irradiate dropped on these Mutalisks. Decent Micro from Hawk to go ahead and peel some of them out. But that does weaken the rest of the Mutalisks significantly. And I love that play. Getting the Mutalisks and then following up with the Dropships. Because without the Mutalisks in the air to really provide the drop, def uh, drop ship defense, that is going to put them in a much more... It just spreads the defense that much thinner. Hawk realizes this. He's going to go ahead and pull Lurkers back into his main. However, Gypsy is doing an end around, getting more drop ships. Well, the, those same drop ships filled and making his way towards this third base. There is a Nidus Canal here. So if he can go ahead and get the drop here in position, get on top of that Nidus Canal, wipe that out, he should be able to wipe out that third and take... A big lead in this game, dropping everything in that corner. Some Scourge were there, but they do not land and finish things off. So this is going to come down. It looks like Drone's certainly going to be expended. But now Lurker's getting through that Nidus Canal nearly immediately. It looks like Hawk anticipated this. Several of the Medic Marines getting wiped out. Reinforcements actually making their way mid-map towards the main. And now the rest of the attack coming from the north. He has managed to halt that gas briefly, but it looks like Hawk is on the defense to wipe the rest of this out. Another dropship moving in, but there's Mutalus and Scourge there this time to engage. He's got to get things out and loses both dropships. Huge shift in momentum. So Hawk able to hold this third base. He should be able to get that third gas back up. That's going to be the critical part of this. Still a handful of Menop Marines in this grouping. But the Science Vessel count, because of those dropships, a little bit lower. Gypsy going ahead and grabbing his third base. But while he's grabbing that third base, Hawk does in fact have that Ultralisk Cavern up. He's, getting, he's making his way towards those huge Carapace upgrades. And he's reestablishing that third gas. And granted, a little bit, I like what Gypsy's doing. He's only got these two Marines left in here. But going ahead and providing what harassment he can. Nice irradiate on that Lurker before it's able to burrow. The Medic's gone. The Mutalisk is moving up. It looks like those... Ooh, actually, Gypsy needs to get those Science Vessels out of there. More Science Vessels uh, joining that grouping. Looks like there's four Science Vessels in the field. And I'm, it looks like there are more Medic Marines kind of waiting in that nearby corner. And I like that Gypsy's kind of doing this press attack. And he wants to keep that... Ooh, Lurker's just dying midfield as they were trying to... Reburrow and provide some support. Gypsy trying to be everywhere. And again, keep this third base from really being efficient and mining to keep the Ultralisks at least at a minimum and off the field. Looks like the Mutalisks able to do some damage and keep the rest of that out. Gypsy running with the rest of his reinforcements. While, and I like that he's also being aggressive, which is also providing its let your offense be your def defense to grab that third. There are lurkers in position now. Some science vessels there doing a pretty good job protecting. Looks like he is going to be able to peel off a lot of those Scourge before they're able to land. But Hawk, he's got that Ultralisk Cavern up. He's building a bit of a bank. If he, Now he's starting to mine that gas. Let's see if he can actually get some Ultralisks out in the field. A racer trick. Hawk very rapidly responding to this by going ahead and pushing the drones through that Nidus Canal. And Gypsy just constantly harassing this third. And peeling in more Medic Marines. Now that those Lurkers are down, and a huge effort from Gypsy to wipe this base out. That Nidus Canal is going to go down, and I believe that's going to be the seal of the match for Gypsy. Counterattack from Hawk. He does have a handful, it looks like at least un -ultralisks, making their way to the natural expansion. But I believe, let's see if Gypsy can defend this. He needs to plant something to go ahead and seal this up. He's running up to the gap, wants to go ahead and blockade where there is a filter, essentially. And this is Hawk, I think, going all in, realizing he's going to lure... Lose that third base and needs to do some counterattack damage to win this match. But Gypsy on top of it, engaging from multiple locations on top of these Ultralisks. And actually has pretty good level 2 weapons versus the level 3 Carapace. Actually chewing through these Ultralisks, making them look a lot softer than they usually are. But still, four Ultralisks stand, a handful of Lurkers. That He is on that natural expansion ground. Looks, looks like some Fire Bats trying to get in the grouping as well. Perhaps expecting uh, some Defiler players, some larger amount of Zerglings. But that third base is out. Gypsy... Let's see if he can return, and if he can just defend, take out these Ultralisks, he will take a huge lead. Hawk 
desperately trying to hold on to this. He's like, okay, I lost that base. Let me go ahead and just try to expand everywhere and play refugee style. I'm just going to go ahead and expend these ultralists to go ahead and keep Gypsy back. I'm going to take two additional bases, and he's just going to not have the mobility to deal with this. Zergling's flooding through. The SEV's actually pulling out. The ultralisks have been here, and they've been a little bit annoying, but honestly, they haven't gotten an immense amount of SCV kills. Gypsy's still sitting at 60 SCVs. The Zerglings, however, now making their way up to this third. He's irradiating his own SCV line, trying to take care of these Zerglings. The Mulus is on top. It is chaos absolutely everywhere. In the meantime, some Marines trying to push in to the bases at the upper left, so Gypsy looking to do some counterattack. And it looks like the Ultras are going to engage, it looks like a pocket of Marines to that corner, and they're actually, because of the upgrade advantage, actually doing a pretty good job of Expending a lot of damage and chewing through them pretty rapidly. A defiler up there. It looks like some additional medic marines on the corner. A huge science vessel fleet moving in. Irradi Let's see how many irradiates they're going to be able to drop. One defiler down two. So both ultralists and the defiler irradiated. They need to be a little bit careful because there are scourge nearby. It looks like one irradiated science vessel being kind of sacrificed with a marine. It's going to pop before it makes it up here. But Hawk looks like he was able to get a lot of those drones out through that Nidus Canal. He's suddenly got this base up and got that third base established. He's got all sorts of minerals all of a sudden, but he's at half the supply of Gypsy. Gypsy moving out with another grouping of Medic Marines. I think as long as, yeah, he, more Science Vessels getting picked off in the air. But honestly, I think if Hawk can fill in with a couple Fire Bats, which it looks like he's already doing, Hawk is so gas-starved at the moment that he's going to have to more or less get it done with Zerglings and Defilers. And... With those fire bats able to chew through those zerglings at rapid pace, if they can get in a, a decent position to do so, Gypsy will be in a great position. Although Hawk is only going to be gas starved for a minute because he is sitting at four gas. I don't know that he has enough of an attack force to defend his holdings, though. Gypsy pushing up into this. The Ultralisk, only one Ultralisk standing there. It looks like it is able to chew through a handful of Medic Marines, but it looks like this base, a couple Ultras is going to spawn. But is it going to be in time to defend this hatchery? This hatchery getting, look at all the spray on that hatchery, getting plummeted bright white of bullet spray on these eggs afterwards, just showing you the sheer mass of Medic Marines. A Defiler there, the Medic, the medic Marines peeling off and moving towards... What was the fourth is now the third for Hawk. Hawk moving a drone out. It looks like this is going to get picked off as well. And that hatchery is just melting. And that is going to be game. As Gypsy also taking a fourth in the upper right-hand corner. Hawk, what is this? A sneaky expansion above the gas. But there's GG from Hawk. Well played from both players. Really making a match of it. That was an exciting one. Really enjoyed that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to move on to game seven. Thanks for listening.